Uh, am I doing right it? Click or on the I button think... that allows everyone to enter. Yes, good. So welcome to the few people who are already joining. Hello, hello. Uh, you're already allowed to just say hello. You know, it's we, we aren't that much for now, so we still can say hello and wave. That's really okay. So I see we have someone called Julia. Hello, Julia. I see a Nico. I, welcome, Nico. I see a Philip. Welcome, Philip. Someone called Smith. That feels very uh, CIA like about that. Uh, we have an Abil, welcome. We have uh, a Burnt also, hello. And Stephanie, welcome Stephanie. So as it's, uh, I feel that you guys really took to, to heart the, this is a Swiss event. Uh, you're joining very early. Uh, I appreciate that. So thank you so much for also joining early. That's, that's something that is extremely lovely. And uh, as we slowly are here, may I ask from where you guys are joining us? I think, uh, Stephanie, you might join us from Switzerland. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. I'm here in Chur. Um, I actually work for the Institute of Tourism uh, from the FH Graubünden. I'm working in service innovation. I'm, I'm also st studying at the High Slew of Service Design. Ah, that's so good. Thanks so much for joining. From Chur. I love with the, with the Swiss German accent. So that's yeah, lovely. Yeah, Chur. Yeah. <laughs> lovely. I see also a nice uh, Julia. Uh, from where are you joining us today? Um, I'm from the Germany office. I am a working student here. So I started in um, just one month ago in March. Okay. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you. That's awesome. So I have a bit of a of a rule of thumb, which is I will repeat it. Uh, right after but the rule of thumb is uh, whenever you have your uh, video on it means that you are someone who we can address and ask questions to directly if you don't have your video on we'll assume that you don't want uh, the team to address you which is fine you know you can also be just a spectator uh, that's also something that is, that is okay uh, so put your video on uh, if you are brave enough to to have uh, to be asked some question i think that's always helps it's just a bit of a of a thing to respect people who are maybe more introverts to to feel comfortable being in the event and for people who uh, dare to 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 show their face and uh, and also uh, speak up please do we really appreciate it Okay, so I see it's exactly 18.00 and uh, as in Swiss fashion, we will start on time and end in time. That's a, a bit of a signature thing that we do for these events. So as people are joining, I want to say a big welcome to everyone. A uh, big welcome to this event uh, called Strategic Design Framework to Navigate Complex Ecosystems. Uh, we are really excited to have this webinar uh, today. In, in this webinar today, we have some great experts. Uh, we have people from the design and critical thinking community, and we have also experts from Outcome. Uh, so we are really delighted. I will just introduce the speakers really uh, quickly, but they will uh, share a bit more and you will have the opportunity to really meet them in action right after. But I want to uh, really say a big thank you to our uh, speakers today because this event is a volunteer event. It's organized all by our volunteers. Uh, it's a lot of work in the backstage by the experts who have prepared an awesome event for us. And I want to say that we are extremely thankful to them uh, to invest all of this for the community. Uh, 
for the service design community, for the design community, for the Swiss community, and for the international community. So a big, big thank you to them. Uh, you don't know how much they worked. I know. Uh, I just saw a little bit, but I know that they worked even harder than what I saw, the, the things I saw. So a big welcome to Kevin Richard. Uh, um, we had already a few pizzas together. It's a great mind, and he has a big expertise in uh, really critical thinking philosophy or sometimes some also, and I think you will see some sprinkles of that. He's the founder of uh, this community um, called Design and Critical Thinking, and you will discover more about him. And we have two people from Outcome, uh, Diana and uh, Krasi, and they are really and uh, Diana is a design lead and Krasi is a strategic designer. They come from the Netherlands, so we have some internationality today. And I'm uh, really excited to have you all uh, for this event today. Before we start, uh, I, I just have a few words uh, for one question that you might. So you're joining an event uh, organized by uh, what's called the... Oh, the SDN, so also the Swiss Service Design Network. And one question you might have is, what the fuck is this? And why should I care? And I'm going to try to answer that in just three slides that are coming slowly. The first one is, it's really simple. It helps you find your next job uh, in Switzerland in service design. Uh, we have, uh, um, we capture all the, the, the jobs posts for service design in Switzerland. So if you want to relocate to Switzerland, go there uh, but also uh, if you're in switzerland studying and you want to find your next opportunity uh, we track that all for you uh, and that should be something really helpful the other thing is it helps you to meet other service designers or design nerds at events just like today and maybe you might end up to find the love of your life that's not a promise it's just in the fine print because we can't promise that but uh, who knows that might also happen and another, the third thing that we offer as a service design network in Switzerland is we try to offer you the community knowledge that uh, brings you to the next level of expertise. And, you know, that might help you also show off at your job or at dinner events. But again, that's not a promise. It's all in the fine print. And if you want to know more, uh, I will not say more, but you have one thing which is called Google, and you can just write SDN Switzerland, and you'll find everything in there. Uh, the job posts on the community board, uh, all the next events, you'll find everything in there. And so the last thing I have to say is this very simple thing, which is have a fun event. Uh, I'm excited. And I just repeat this rule of thumb that we have, which is uh, put your camera on if you feel that we can speak to you, that we can ask you questions. And if you're more on the introvert side of things and uh, or more on the spectator side of things and don't want to be uh, asked for questions, then just take your camera off and we will not uh, disturb you. That's basically the only thing I have for you today to say. Uh, I'll be more in the chat and more uh, it's, uh, working as a participant and I'm super excited for this event. Again, a big thank you to Diana, Krasi and Kevin for creating this event and sharing all their knowledge with us today. Thank you so much for your support, Daniele. I'm also going to share the, the link to the board, which uh, it will be good so everyone can access it. Hello everyone from me as well. Um, I hope you see the screen. Can you give me thumbs up if you see it? I'm trying to share Miro. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and uh, oh, without so, quick... sorry. One other thing, maybe just to, uh, if everyone who is not speaking could mute their microphone so we don't get like a interference noise and things like that. We would really appreciate that. Yeah, Kevin already. Thanks. Okay, <clears throat> so let's begin to have fun. So without further ado, um, we are super excited to join this uh, strategic uh, workshop and have the opportunity to share a new framework for strategic design that we have been working on for quite some time now with uh, Kevin and Diana. And for today, 
the program is slightly different from perhaps what you're used to because we thought we um, uh, we don't want to just talk about framework uh, concepts and research. Of course, we are super passionate about that, but most importantly, is we want to bring this to life and have fun together. So in the process of uh, the, um, the two hours that we have together, we will be sharing the framework and also a pair it with the use case. And we pick specifically MasterCard because we felt that um, that's a very good example and it fits a lot of uh, the criteria that we have to have a, a somebody from whom we can learn and also see how we can use the experience to, to navigate different oceans and what does this mean um, to leverage their competitive advantage. And everything would be done through interactive activities, so all hands on board, as we say here. Uh, one caveat that I need to make is that we are not going to break into rooms, so everyone would be together um, and we had prepared activities that uh, uh, accommodate such a large participation and we hope uh, you would have fun in that. Uh, if there is anyone in the group today with MasterCard or Twitter, which you'll find out later why, Please uh, bear with us if we had made some general statements that you disagree. We basically use generic information, so we don't have anything specific or inside knowledge from these companies. So the concepts are, are rather for illustrative purposes. And with that, I would hand over to Kevin to present this uh, new tool with the code name Ocean 20. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Krazi, and hi, everyone. Um, so, so yeah, so we, we will present, I will give a, uh, um, really, um, like a general description of the, of what to expect to do with this new tool that we, we call a, a strategic, uh, framework with the code name of Ocean 20, as Crazy said, um, it's, it's still, um, a working progress, uh, framework. So if don't hesitate to, um, uh, give us feedback after after this event because this is something that we we really look for uh, forward to and um, and so why do we want to do to create a new tool basically is that uh, is uh, one of the of the question you might have and we we so we thought with uh, with this framework to um, to approach innovation and questions related to um, what we call complex uh, uh, ecosystems or complex environments um, uh, in a different way, and especially to uh, highlight the dynamics of um, the interactions within a landscape, uh, which can be uh, in this instance, uh, the market um, a landscape. Uh, and the idea is to uh, allow participants, uh, users of this framework to explore multiple scenarios um, and see opportunities in a in a new way um, and uh, of course to have fun with this uh, uh, with this framework which will provide some kind of um, new languages uh, a new language a new way of talking about things uh, that hopefully bring some fun and um, uh, new ways to connect things together so I will hand over to <laughs> now to Diana, back to Diana. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, we will be treating quite a, uh, a lot of complex concepts and we'll, we'll play a little bit with, I'm just gonna be first everyone to me, because we wanna actually do a bit of um, an icebreaker exercise. So, and before we uh, give you our uh, terminology and uh, all the, the theory that's been put into it, we want to actually hear from you. What do you associate with the ocean as a metaphor in strategy and service design? So we want to have this activity before we, we jump into the, the bulk of the, the workshop. So I'm going to give a timer so we can have a, around five minutes and people can just uh, speak their minds freely and uh, you know, it's uh, it's not always only about uh, the ocean itself. You may may have certain elements about it, uh, uh, not not restricted to the the let's say not not the fluidity, but like the the water element, and maybe just the, the life forms or the ecosystems underneath it, and so on. So, you know, your imagination is the limit. 
I already see a I cool answer. My playing ground, somebody said. Super cool. Uh, what caught my attention first was the drunk favors, but I thought maybe I shouldn't start <laughs> there. Hidden life, another very good one. No, oh, thanks. Someone is very ambitious, calling it my playground. Yes. <laughs> So far, it's my favorite. <clears throat> and I, I am already seeing a pattern of it's it's big, it's the scale, it's uh, you know all these varieties of oceans, uh, of sort of uh, of uh, op opportunities and options. And I also love um, uh, the note that says cycle of life um, because indeed life starts here um, and it's a, it's a powerful one. Flux and reflux. <clears throat> wow. We have, a, we have a, a lot of input. Thank you. No, it's we for sure be boiling the ocean. The Somebody ocean. wrote boiling the ocean. I, uh, I think that's uh, that's going to happen for sure today. Yes, climate change is not always about uh, it's, it's it's also affecting business climate. In between two continents, I think this is another powerful one because we will see later in the in the presentation why we believe that there is more than a single ocean and what happens when you um, decide to change oceans as part of your strategy or service design and the implications with uh, with such a transition. Two more minutes. I see people keep coming. Wow, it's a really big community. It's a fun fact that I see so many blue sticky notes. The ocean is blue here. Hey, we just got the pink one, competitive environment. So there you go. There we go. Splash of color. You can, put some music. you can get a lot of, of wonder if you go over the first fears. I, uh, I think that's uh, a really well said because it does come with a lot of um, risk taking. These deep and vast waters um, are not easy and certainly can be overwhelming. So it does require a lot of uh, courage to overcome the fears. But hey, once you do, there would be many colors in reality, not just blue. Love it. Hmm. Yes, we do have some colors prepared. Uh, if you've seen some of the uh, snippets uh, we've shared, they are not just uh, red and blue oceans, but we'll go over that uh, in a bit. OK, so last minute to fill up the ocean. Uh, Mermaids, wow. <laughs> yes. So it doesn't take long until people get into the mythical space of the ocean. We we make this, you know, it's it's a real thing, the ocean, but then it, you know, there's a kraken in the middle, just taking over the all the attention. But I guess it's associated with the unknown. It, it fosters that space for imagination. And this is what we're counting on. We're counting on really working with imagination, imagination and intelligence make a really good match if they're matured together and not let to, to fall apart. Okay. Oh, nice. Last 10 seconds. Okay. Yes, yeah, see. Okay, time's up. So yeah, <laughs> a so we very have a lot deep of ocean. <laughs> yes, yeah, a lot, yeah. of input. a lot of interesting things. Yeah, <laughs> great. So, so what we we have with this framework uh, three main um, things we want to to focus on, uh, and 
uh, those three things are innovation, complexity, and metaphor. Uh, I will go quickly on the two first, but it, I think it's, uh, it's still quite important. Um, so on the innovation, we want to approach it as um, really something as a collective exploration and imagination process, as you might, uh, you might already uh, see. Um, and uh, we want to, to change a bit the approach on speaking of and thinking of innovation with this framework. Another thing that is important uh, to understand, and this relates to uh, mainly to complexity itself, is to understand that uh, within a, a complex uh, system, uh, what uh, matters most is not the part of the system, but how they interconnect together. And so with this framework, we want to focus on the relationships uh, between the things, in between the things that we discuss uh, within the, the innovation landscape or market landscape and how, uh, how they interconnect and how they, uh, we can change them or um, see new ways of connecting things. So it's about putting back the relationships in the, at the middle of the discussion and uh, action and decisions. And lastly, and this is pro probably one of the, the, the most important thing with this framework is we bring metaphors uh, to the discussion that helps with visual, um, uh, visual uh, elements that, um, that will help everyone working with this framework to uh, discuss about complex stuff uh, in a um, more e easy uh, way because we bring up these uh, visual metaphors that will help discussing about them. What is interesting is that with this framework, we start from the context that the market we are discussing. We, with the metaphors, we go in abstraction mode where we, we can discuss about uh, things and how they connect and find new ways to connect things and stuff like that using the metaphors. And then uh, afterwards, uh, recontextualizing those uh, ideas back into the context so it's uh, it's our aim with this uh, with this framework and um yeah we'll dive in uh pun intended <laughs> okay so I give you cool. the, the so this hands. was the yeah. this was the overview or the introduction section and if my mark allows me i'm going to move to the first one in the first um, portion of the workshop we are going to dive really deep into the oceans and I'm going to hand yes. the stage to Diana. Yes, thank you. So, yes, oceans. You know, one of the main ambitions for this framework was to create powerful metaphors that can work in parallel with business language without distorting reality. So the business landscape is, you know, increasingly complex and it's evolving to the point that existing frameworks miss certain realities because they're not tuned to capture them. The duality of blue, red and blue oceans kind of hinders the exploration of a wider range of opportunities and uh, innovation capabilities. And because they're not tailored to capture that diversity, the rules to operate in, in them simplify the context and the unique and possibly decisive features of the players involved. So for us, uh, these oceans are equally, you know, are equal to value spaces we consider to be a blend of product value and customer need matched and fulfilled under certain specific market conditions or rules. We also get a hint here of the types of innovations that may we may need to consider, how we alternate them depending on the type of ocean, how fit they are to make a difference. And to, to make the right decisions, we need all the insights and clarity we, we can get. So, you know, as you can see already, <laughs> They are five oceans, you know, there were two, but now they're five, thanks to us, uh, with the addition of yellow, green, and gray. So now remembering them is a bit tricky. So we'll break it down first into the basic advantage, disadvantage that is specific to each. Uh, it's not so different. The red ocean is not so different from what people is normally associated with, but we think it's, it offers stability, but because of the long fights with competition, businesses tend to stagnate or at least never achieve a competitive breakthrough that puts them in the lead, because that means risking stability. The blue ocean, it's kind of similar to, you know, it entice, it's enticing for front runner and first to innovate businesses who seek opportunities before everyone else gets to see the business value. And they're trying to, to create something there. But given the conditions for exploring the unknown, they can really get lost on the journey. 
uh, it happens to the best of us, I guess. Uh, the Yellow Ocean now is a departure point that neither red nor blue could contain, which is the blitz scale success with innovative and creative approaches to launching and positioning product services. So the speed of gaining market share is the only way to basically avoid sinking. Uh, the green ocean is also a special value space that the red and blue ocean were under Irvin, which is moving purpose before profit to make an impact on the world by considering long-term value coming from problems worth solving and potentially caused by players in other oceans. Uh, however, here it's difficult to gain momentum from one opportunity into the other, and often players get stuck incapable of reaching the impact they want to make for reasons that are outside their control. And lastly, Grey Ocean is a configuration of local markets, places where the unspoken rule is uh, trust building, where radical overthrow and innovation may simply be rejected because it threatens the community and their self-sustenance. Not respecting local rules is counterproductive for new entrants. So, so, but where to start and where to be? So big companies tend to operate in multiple oceans, which requires them to have different strategies to navigate successfully those value spaces. Everyone starts in one ocean and seeks to move into the others to pursue new opportunities. For instance, an innovative technology can come from the blue ocean, but as it matures and other players see the business opportunity, they might move to where it's bound to bring success, like yellow ocean, where it can be deployed at scale and make a lot of profit from it. It can also be then taken to the red ocean, where it's a powerful differentiator for those competitive businesses to take on and so on. Uh, but we can also follow on businesses maturing from one space to another as they pivot, adopt new strategies, or transform their business radically. Identifying the starting point and then mapping uh, your development, kind of simulating potential routes and scenarios, we, kind of, we really aim to have the tool help with that. So for this uh, workshop, we did a bit of research here. Um, to test the tool against a more concrete use case. So we chose MasterCard because it's a well-known brand that, you know, if not all, you know, mo at least most of us have come in contact with the service. So they also have a, they're also a very fairly good candidate for revealing multi-ocean strategy. Big companies like MasterCard tend to have a, a, a rich influence in at least three of the five oceans. Based on the re research we conducted, we decided to let out the green ocean since it didn't really come as obvious if they had a service playing by those rules. So MasterCard is a typical red ocean starter that grew as a business by considering closed adjacent services that align with their core business. So in the red ocean, they're doing the banking with credit, debit, prepaid lend lending as uh, kind of main features. Then uh, moving into the yellow ocean, there's the big space of the e-commerce where mobile payments, digital wallets, payment infrastructure, B2B transactions are also uh, very uh, overarching. And then uh, they're also considering and really trying to keep up with technological innovation, adopting and considering blockchain and uh, cybersecurity and new, you know, AI, intelligence, uh, open banking, but also they're all, uh, they, they really understand the power local solutions can have and the opportunity that kind of comes uh, in, in, in the long run with markets with uh, you know, limited electronic payments today can grow as really big uh, over time. So, but to sustain that presence and you know, not fall behind, it takes quite an incredibly broad vision to capture that complexity and to and use it to make decisions. So, because each ocean will probably raise different challenges, they may be, they will need to be able to map those. So now the second thing that we want to do, uh, as we touched on these uh, advantages and disadvantages, we want to think about your ocean. If you can recognize yourself in one of these oceans, the company, uh, the, the, the position that you have in, if you're in a, a certain industry that you could associate as currently dominating uh, a certain ocean, and to think about what are those 
challenges that you would typically associate with that. I think this would be a good exercise for us to to ground a little the ocean theory. So maybe we could take another, let's say, five minutes. We, yes. And yes, warm up before we get further deeper into the waters. So we wanted to to get your feedback and see where do you sit today? And with this metaphor, which ocean comes to mind to the industry you're operating? And also, very importantly, the challenges that you face, because this would help us calibrate a little, as Diana was presenting, the advantages and disadvantages. We want to find out, are there more nuances that uh, we should consider? And you see here on the screen that I'm sharing that in each ocean, we put just as a reminder the key components that characterize it, like uh, our, our Start with the less familiar ones or uh, red and blue, everyone knows, but the yellow, it stands for blitz scaling, high risk, disruptive impact. So anyone in the AI space or uh, fintech or um, any deep tech that um, uh, is working on perhaps would recognize uh, this ocean to be theirs. And uh, then we have the green ocean, I think. There, the, the metaphor is really uh, easy to remember because this is the sustainability, purpose over profit, uh, value for the underserved. Maybe if you're working for Pat Patagonia, this would be a space for you. And lastly is the gray ocean, anything with a local business. Um, it maybe appears to be a small ocean, but it is nevertheless very important. And this ocean, we think, characterizes with a high and low season. There are peaks in demand, but then there is also seasonality. And maybe to some extent also this ocean is very protective of its players and is not so uh, friendly to new entrants. Um, but I don't know. Let's see where, where are we at today. I see a lot of uh, inputs still on the mm -hmm. green ocean. Uh, by the way, if you need more sticky notes and you haven't used Miro before, maybe we can generate. If not, the control panel appears on the left. Yes, Web, yes, I feel like Web the... 3. Web 3 <laughs> in the yellow ocean. Uh, I mean, it started in the, the blue ocean, but I think it's beginning to move. It's, it's gaining a lot of weight. So we also can see how things are developing, how products, once they evolve, they're bound to move oceans. They kind of overstay their welcome, I guess. For, for, the, sorry, for those who don't want to share the, their company names, you don't have to. Just put your challenges and in which ocean you, you feel like you, you are operating in. Yeah, so like, for example, I saw that the green uh, ocean, you know, one of the most typical challenges is getting funds, is really making <laughs> sure you're self-sustaining not to, to, to run out of business. Because you have to really be aggressive to to kind of achieve a level of stability in a place where people don't really like seeing the business case. Uh, really overthrowing the paradigm of how success is being created. Yes, yeah, so I see some uh, in the chat as well. I'm going to copy here. I wonder, Rio is state in a blue ocean. That's an interesting one. Uh, if you consider virtual real estate, like in the metaverse, oh, yes, yes. I think that's interesting. <laughs> You know, my, my favorite and the worst case I know for the yellow oceans are the e-scooters. That's my go-to worst <laughs> yellow ocean initiative. 30 more seconds we have uh, for this exercise. <clears throat> We so, also you know, see I, I here see virtual it. health in the blue ocean. Yes, that's a nice one. 
you know, the, the telemedicine, I guess. Um, so there is potential for these oceans, because initially we were a bit reticent, uh, kind of being stuck with the two oceans, but we didn't know whether we are making a good move towards the other, the addition of the other. So now I see that there is some value to, to categorize businesses like this, since it offers that possibility. Okay, our well, time's up. I think we can give you more minutes for people that are writing to finish their ideas. We are, I'm keeping yeah. track of time, so we are on track, not behind schedule. We've been ignoring the, the gray ocean, but actually here it's it's a lot of valuable stuff. So tourism and 3D printing, you know, what does tourism and 3D printing have in common? The gray ocean, because they they actually have these specifics. But, you know, it's, it's businesses sometimes when, when we keep a shared language of a of business level vocabulary, we tend to fail to see those connections. But now using a metaphor that has these uh parameters of high low season hostile to new entrants the local business now it, it created conditions for those businesses to be paired together so i think it's a it's just a, an interesting insight we're amazed by our own pool in case you didn't notice but that's the beauty of first time testing I don't know if we mentioned that, but indeed, this is uh, the first time that uh, we reviewed the two and uh, put it to test to such a big audience. So thanks a lot for being patient and uh, sharing your thoughts and ideas uh, to to bring to life um, these metaphors and the spaces. Shall we move on with the second section? Uh, Kevin, what do you think? Maybe th there's just a question that maybe we can answer right now because we are still in the oceans. Okay. Uh, from Russo, David, can you explain why gray ocean businesses are particularly hostile to new entrants? Uh, I can take that on and you can help me out if I'm uh, missing something else. Yeah. So we, when we thought of the gray ocean, we had two metaphors in mind, actually. We had the Arctic Ocean and then we had the idea of uh, gray areas. You know, where there isn't a black and white thinking, where things are being crystallized over time and they have a spectrum of uh, nuances. So the, the gray ocean was meant to be a, the, the smallest of the oceans who has uh, tradition, but not tradition in the businesses, tradition over time, that it's a cultural form of tradition. It's those particularities that you normally associate with the people. And the reason they are hostile to the new entrants is because new entrants are outsiders and they normally, if they don't understand the local market, if they don't understand their needs, their preferences and their the, the respect for the culture, it's uh, then tends to be these frictions. It's like bringing, for example, I'm going to give a very random example of a pie factory in, you know, in a, or like, a, I don't know, um, with the Dr. Martin's shoes, bring it into a village in England, for example. This is a case of a new entrant making uh, a successful move into a very local space. Uh, and, but the, the, the company itself had to earn the trust of the people who are working there and assure them that they're giving, they're offering really secure jobs and you know even discounts for shoes. So that's kind of the way it's not exploitative but it's really cooperative and i think that's where the hostility comes from from not being able to to give trust i does that answer the question thank you yeah <laughs> yes it does <laughs> So uh, I'm, we can move on the, um, okay. the, um, the players. Yes, second part of Great. the framework, players. <laughs> <laughs> so as you saw, we have, we, we, with the oceans, we set up the context in which we are acting. 
um, now we, we need to define a bit who are acting within this, um, these different contexts. And so to do so, uh, we uh, described um, some um, archetypical uh, behaviors, we could say, um, that uh, in form of players, we call them players, uh, and they describe uh, likely behaviors and attitudes um, regarding um, how they uh, either identify or treat information within that context or and act uh, accordingly to this understanding. So we have uh, right now five different uh, players. Um, so we have the Navy, the merchant, the jet, the submarine and the magician. Uh, and they all have some uh, characteristics um, to that define a bit how they will appreciate, understand, and behave uh, within the, the, the landscape. The important thing to understand is that uh, first of all, people are not uh, players are not limited to one uh, category, right? So they can be uh, multiple uh, um, archetypes, basically, uh, but they will have um, a, a main one that will. That will that will uh, appear to be the one they they use the most of them um, to interpret information and act in the in their landscape. So this is where we are interested uh, to to define the players with this um, with these uh, archetypes. Um, so just to describe really quickly the the different players. So the navy is uh, mainly operating in the the known. Uh, they they rely especially on um, uh, constraints, so it's where they strive. They don't like risk, uh, and they are really good at um, uh, responding in a tactical way to situations. The merchants are uh, a bit more comfortable dealing with uh, uncertainty, um, so they are a bit in a in between situation, um, um, and um, basically they seek uh, flows and connection, quantity of interactions, stuff like that. The jet is more goal driven. Um, they operate in the uh, from the known to the unknown. Uh, they are more risk taker. Um, they still are uh, tactical thinkers. And the submarine is more in a discovery mode where they can uh, explore new things. That's uh, so they operate really well in a known situation. Um, the main approach is to explore, sense, and categorize things so they can um, react to it, to them accordingly. Uh, but they will avoid uh, conflict, so they are not uh, aggressive type of uh, behavior. Unlike, for instance, uh, the navy, they could be more aggressive in this in this aspect. And the magician, they rely on the ex unexpected. Uh, they are really adaptive, and uh, they will avoid cons constraints basically. So they are really high uh, risk uh, takers. So that's to um, define them uh, quickly. Uh, now, in respect to the case study we uh, we choose, uh, we use a report from uh, CB Insight on um, who categorize uh, companies uh, based on their uh, competitive advantage, and they create they created four different categories for for these companies. Uh, so we have the network effects, uh, the costs, the social, and the resources, and we added a new one, which is the the, the fifth uh, category, uh, the new, where basically the we can break uh, rules. And so below you can see um, companies that fit in these um, categories that were um, listed by the, the report. Uh, and we mapped out our um, players and their archetypes uh, according to the, um, the different categories. So the network effects is more on the Navy side, the cost are more the, the merchant type of architect that will deal with this kind of uh, context, the jets uh, for the social, the submarine for the resources. And the new is the magician, basically, where there's a lot of things that are unexpected uh, and it's more like garage innovation, uh, startup like mentality. Uh, Crazy, I don't know if you want to add anything because I. <laughs> I, uh, I just maybe one comment. On that. I, I, yeah, I wanted to add um, to the description that Kevin provided that these archetypes actually may depend uh, on where the company is in which ocean. So it doesn't mean that 
Uh, for example, as we are going uh, with MasterCard today to illustrate the framework, they may not always be a Navy. If they decide to go under a new segment, they all of a sudden act as a magician or a merchant. So um, allow some flexibility and freedom for these uh, um, characters uh, in your in your yeah. mind and uh, also use them as appropriate. And don't be fixated that if uh, at the beginning of the story uh, your company is uh, merging, it has to remain as such. And that's the power of the metaphor that we want to test the boundaries and also invite these opportunities not only to change ocean, oceans, as Diana was showing how from the blue we can access the other four, but also from the archetype, uh, what will it take for a Navy to turn into a magician? Uh, and the framework can be used in that context as well. And with that, we have uh, an example uh, <clears throat> where we put into perspective the the, the characters, as uh, we call them, and how do they relate to, to MasterCard, specifically in the Yellow Ocean? Yes. So, um, so here in the Yellow Ocean, uh, MasterCard is uh, acting mainly as, um, as a Navy uh, archetype. Uh, and so if we look at MasterCard and, and its uh, direct ecosystem, uh, we can see that they, we have different entities. Uh, so we have the payment processor, the banks, the account holder, and the merchant. Um, and basically, MasterCard acts as an intermediary between all of these uh, entities. So it's a um, fairly well-known, uh, low uncertainty type of environment. Um, and this is where basically uh, a Navy profile uh, is most suited for uh, in this case. And if we now broaden up a bit our um, uh, view of this uh, yellow ocean um, and we put against MasterCard um, the other players, uh, we can see that we can categorize them into um, different categories uh, like, like enemy, frenemy, friends, uh, or uh, also other players that they choose to ignore uh, right now because they feel like they are not so relevant. Um, and not really a threat to, to them. So um, if we take the, the major competitor, uh, mainly they will be other type of um, uh, Navy profile, basically, so the do dominant player. Uh, here we have uh, Visa, for instance. Um, we have the, the Frenemy, which are the digital wallets um, like PayPal, uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay. Um, so some they they uh, appear to be some to be some uh, risk to to replace credit cards and so potentially to make Mastercard a bit irrelevant. But there can still be um, there can still be um, um, partnerships between Mastercard and those uh, those other players. Uh, on the payment processor side, uh, we have the friends, those who uh, enable MasterCard to operate its uh, its model. Um, and uh, lastly, we have the unconventional, unconventional, sorry, entrants. Uh, typically, we have Alipay. But if we take for uh, uh, on its uh, words, uh, Elon Musk and his uh, ambition to transform um, Twitter as a everything app and especially a payment engine. Uh, we could say that Twitter is also an unconventional entrance in this space. And uh, crazy, we don't see your screen anymore. I know, Miro kicked okay. me out, but I'm coming back. It's just <laughs> okay. No worries. Okay. Um, so I'll share it. I'll share it. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. And so if we move to the 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 other slide. Now we have um, we want to to put you in a, a different uh, position. Uh, it's uh, what we call a plot twist in uh, in our story right now. Uh, let's say we take the um, the perspective now uh, of Twitter uh, entering this space. Why Twitter? Because uh, basically we we believe that um, right now in the in the case of this uh, exercise, it could be really interesting to take. Um, uh, a new entrant um, to to the space and how they could disrupt the master, mastercard um, business model in the yellow ocean 
And so we ask you basically from what you understand of what Twitter is doing right now, what its its uh, capabilities, um, what could what benefit or experience would they bring um, in the credit card uh, environment uh, to disrupt Mastercard, basically. I don't know if uh, any crazy or Diana want to add something to put a bit more context in the exercise. But uh, basically, no, can be I new features, are, value prop. Or, for, uh, yes, yeah. indeed, a lot of uh, creativity and imagination to to think what could possibly Twitter do with their entrance if indeed Elon is serious about the credit card to disrupt the status quo. And uh, yeah, let's see what the magician can uh, can offer. So. Um, Curious to see what the community thinks. We have again five minutes for this exercise, so we're keeping things uh, short and sweet. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, at this uh, this point, we one of uh, the things that we were really looking for is to see how this non-linearity of thinking uh, can be enabled by you know you're not going through your first competitor. You're trying to like just think outside the box a little, and I think the the unconventional entrance uh, at this point might maybe shed some some insight into uh, what's coming. If it's coming, if it's not, then we can avoid it. And potentially, like point of fragility in the current uh, Mastercard's business model. So yeah. Well, Elon has a history with PayPal, so for sure he understands uh, uh, this segment. But uh, uh, now, a few years later, after his success, we are wondering how he can. Uh, turn Twitter as a financial entity. So uh, we even consider that maybe credit cards would be made available on Mars. Who knows if he's heading there anytime soon. Maybe what about how can we like translate uh, into the, the banking space that the retweet if this is, is a, a typical feature of Twitter? I'm trying to think though, I don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if we take what what exists on the um, um, on you know Chinese or a Asian markets, uh, ability to send money uh, with just a message, right, to someone you know, uh, something like that, that that will speed up um, transactions, basically. I I just see here uh, a note from somebody who said that maybe we'll have better scam detection, so maybe the Twitter would be used to verify the identity. If you are not on Twitter, um, yeah, good luck getting the Twitter credit card. <laughs> and maybe the, the blue dot that Elon is now assigning for the verified accounts will turn into some sort of a currency and those uh, could get indeed the 0% interest. And also, what if you could just text your opinion, you know, the word count from your tweet would be would amount to a certain amount of money that you're sending out. I don't know. <laughs> I think this would be because it becomes a form of social currency. Yeah, new features every week, indeed. It can happen. <clears throat> Instead of getting your card, uh, credit card has been declined, it's it's going to be, it's expired. You get it by a, a quicker <laughs> message. <laughs> can everyone to see? Yeah, a lot of crypto addition. I love the idea of proprietary form of currency, right? In the in sense of maybe mm -hmm. I'm understanding it in a different way, but uh, that anyone could create like its form of uh, token or, or currency through tweets could be interesting. Yeah, they're using tweets as currency, like NFTs. You know, uh, a tweet worth a thousand, not words, but dollars, I guess. 
Uh, and maybe, yeah, like um, there are a few comments on how um, there are no actual credit cards. It's just, it's a very digitized QR code. It's, it's no longer a matter of competing with a physical card. Yeah, ability to tweet a payment to someone. I didn't think of that. <clears throat> the Dogecoin cashback. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, a lot of interesting ideas here. So uh, uh, if we have anyone um, from, uh, <clears throat> from uh, the audience working for either Twitter or MasterCard, I'd love to hear their opinion and views on uh, what does uh, this picture tell you? But uh, I can't see the screen, so uh, I don't know if we have anyone that can would like to to comment or say a few words before we move po forward. Just I, I think we a lot. Uh, just Kevin, you want to just add raise it? your no, just raise your hand your hand if you uh, through the the the, um, the tool in um, in Teams if you if you want to. Uh, you, you also have in. it in Miro. If you see my screen share, you know you can also yeah. raise hand here. It's also easy to see. Nice. Okay, maybe we can uh, move on to the third bit of uh, the framework, where we have something different. Yes. And uh, I, uh, I'd like to share with you the story around the, the monsters and why we felt that no strategic exploration can be without monsters. Uh, <clears throat> the departure point that we took compared to what exists out there in different frameworks is that we didn't really want to make a separation between external and um, internal risks and challenges. And of course, monsters constitute that because we felt that in this um, super high paced and very volatile environment, things move way too fast for us to make this uh, rigid distinction of uh, whether the risk is internal or becomes an external factor. And we saw it uh, more or less like uh, interconnected. But to make the life um, easier a little and also manageable, we wanted to find four different profiles of uh, monsters that we wanted to attribute to uh, this ocean and also to, to these characters that we just uh, had a chat around and Kevin presented. And our monsters here are maybe familiar, maybe uh, surprising to you, but we start with the Leviathan. This is a sea monster that can uh, that lives in shallow waters. And we think that this is an important metaphor, uh, especially in the context of the restricted access um, and routes to success, because these different oceans, they require different strategies for success. And we felt that no character uh, would succeed without passing the test for such monster. Next is Moby Dick. Moby Dick is the huge whale that is impossible to catch and kill at sea that comes with a lot of obsession. A good example would be maybe a startup looking after a big company as an investor or going for venture capital. So they get fixated on this big fish that they um, have in their that has a mind of its own and also very unpredictable behavior. And the one thing that uh, made us really curious of how to use Moby Dick is the fact that when we did the research, it turns out that Moby Dick, and also from the literature, doesn't really care about people or humans per se, but Moby Dick cares about other whales. So in that context, if um, if you are uh, a navy and you want to, uh, you want to. Oh, sorry, maybe not navy, but if you are a small company trying to change its position, or maybe you are a merchant. And, and there is this Moby Dick out there. You need to think about that. Perhaps it's not necessarily uh, in the eyesight of, uh, of what you do um, in the context of the monster, but Moby Dick has a mind on its own. And then, of course, as we saw in the first uh, exercise, when we open up with the um, metaphor for the oceans, we we are using mermaid and mermaids are very mysterious creatures that live both on land and sea. And they may appear to be friendly or inoffensive, but they could turn out to be rather dangerous. And this illusion of the form is their way for self-preservation. So to bring it now into the business context, what does it mean for teams? 
uh, to encounter a mermaid. And for us, mermaid represents this idea that the teams often get um, tempted to deviate from their course of action or from the uh, North Star or the objective that they have to encounter. So that's why we thought that let's uh, let's bring the mermaid and make sure that we do not forget where we are heading and what we are supposed to do. And lastly, as a sea monster, we have Siwa, which is a monster with multiple uh, feet and heads, a monster that uh, is uh, hunting, especially those that want to navigate its territories. And in the business context, um, the metaphor here that and specific uh, behavior of the monster that we were interested in is this idea that it is impossible to fight it direct. So you have to find really a different route. So also use this coordinated team effort uh, to overcome this challenge in your pursuit of success. And to make things a little bit easy, then we thought maybe we can give each monster actually a specific characteristic and the Leviathan we associate with fear. Uh, again, in the context of MasterCard, we thought an example would, uh, would bring to life how to think of monsters. So how do you think of a monster in the context of MasterCard? Well, we thought maybe Apple credit card is a good example because um, of uh, entrance of a competitor in an established market and with the attempt of um, uh, Apple to expand the uh, Apple Pay wallet and offer credit cards together in the partnership with Goldman Sachs, we thought that's a good monster uh, to think about. Then for the Moby Dick, um, this monster we associate with obsession. And in the context of uh, MasterCard again, how do you recognize obsession? Well, we think crypto perhaps, uh, is a good analogy and good trend that is out there that um, is uh, uh, catching the attention for the mainstream players. And um, there is a lot of uh, a lot of potential, especially in the unbanking sector. Also, uh, companies and Mastercard specifically are looking for more growth and more growth through digital transactions. But there is a Moby Dick out there. So let's see what does this mean. Moving further, the mermaid. So mermaid to us represented a seduction and it is really a new case if uh, when we looked at MasterCard to turn their growth as a seduction. And I'll explain why. Because compared to other industry and other players who had experienced actually uh, a compression and challenge with the uh, economic crisis, the pandemic and all the turbulence that we experienced in the last uh, two years or so, MasterCard has steady and consistent growth, which means very high stock and very high appreciation of uh, the brand value. But on the other hand, these legacy operations um, in the payment world uh, are perhaps misleading and slowing down and making MasterCard a bit too comfortable in its position. So we wanted to bring this idea that growth in this context may be a seduction and too comfortable a place to sit on and they need to, to think about differently on this aspect. And, and lastly, <coughs> excuse me, Siwa is the metaphor for greed. And why uh, is there Siwa in the uh, environment of MasterCard? Well, when we looked at the fintech sector in general, we saw that there are more than 300 unicorns. This is a, a company worth a billion and above US dollars. And also, if you put this into the context with the steady decline in cash globally, uh, there is a lot of opportunity in this space. Um, I was even surprised myself to learn out that some of the digitized economies like uh, and countries like uh, Sweden, Singapore and UK, they have less than 1% uh, processing of payments in cash. So everything is digital and there is a lot of opportunity in this space. And with this in mind, oh, I just lost uh, Miro. With this in mind, we want you to have, uh, maybe Diana, can you help? Because I can't see the screen. Um, we want yes, to have so. another activity and exercise. Yes, so the, the activity here is now that you've been familiarized a little with the monsters and uh, what they can do and what they represent. Uh, it would be interesting now thinking about the Twitter case, 
to to see what is the the monster Twitter is hiding behind that it's creating this uh, uh, potentially threatening situation for for Mastercard. What do you where do you think Twitter resides if it's to associate with the monster? So what we want to do here is to do a bit of a voting. If you want to take uh, your pick uh, out of the four monsters, so I'm gonna quickly add it. There we go. So that's the voting area. So I'm gonna give you a minute and you have one vote for each. And feel free to start. The power of democracy. I must say, though, the, the icons are hilarious, especially for the Leviathan. We couldn't find a better one. Yeah, it, it could be the the Bigfoot. It would be the same, <laughs> actually. Yeah, I see it's, it's got some hair under armpits. Yeah. You have a way too much uh -huh. uh, imagination. Yes. Okay, let's see the votes. So we've got 11 votes for Sila. So this is the monster we'll be focusing on. The greed showing up quite strongly here. But also on second place, I see there is a seduction with the mermaid. Of course, there's always this uh, alluring or uh, coming from growth. Uh, so with that be in mind, I think our monster i think we should select it can we so we can move to the next activity where we have to i think this is one of the most difficult sides of uh, our workshop today but it's also one of the most important because this is where we are asking a very some very important questions and they will determine the kind of moves and strategies that we may be able to develop uh, in accordance to to the the monster and the threat at hand. So, Krasi, can you see what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, I can see uh, on the teams, but I apologize, my mirror keeps breaking, so I'm uh, kicked out. But I, I would like to explain the activity. So, what we wanted to do here for those that are familiar with the different um, degrees of innovation, we want to start actually at the bottom of the ocean because we think that. Uh, no matter what, first and foremost, um, and I apologize, I don't see the voting of the monster. So what is our favorite monster? I mean, sorry, it's not a, favorite, but uh, the most uh, dangerous, the Skyla. Yes, uh, the green. The thing is, everything yes. is, okay, so is locked. That's, so the, that's growth. Those. Basically, how can, how can um, the task at hand here, Thinking again and linking the monster to the to the greed, which meant growth in the context of uh, Mastercard. The question that we need to solve first is the survive, um, and the survive in this instance represents a degree of change, uh, something that you can tweak to your product, like a product feature or the offering um, in the context of e-commerce that uh, would help Mastercard not stagnate, but and also not be comfortable with this uh, uh, with this trajectory of growth, but to keep innovating and to keep offering new and new services. And for uh, for this exercise, we are looking for these ideas first at the bottom of the ocean that can uh, support this degree of change. Yeah, so I'm gonna give roughly five minutes, but we can go overboard. And for this mm -hmm. one, think of think, think of different features. Think of uh, anything else that Mastercard can do without disrupting too much the main uh, the main offering with the uh, e-commerce and uh, mobile payments. Mm -hmm. 
And then the way we are going to do this exercise is that we have four steps because we are tracking really the uh, three degrees of innovation uh, and also thinking about completely outside of the box. So we'll have four activities and after each one we are going to vote on the most favorable approach that collectively the team um, thinks uh, it's the winning strategy for that for that part. Yeah, so a typical case of, uh, I guess, incremental uh, innovation would be to continue to focus on facilitating fast and easy transactions. Uh, a lot around the fees, you know, just to essentially reduce transaction fees. Because what happens in at this bottom at the survival level with just making changes to the, the features, it's a it's, you know essentially compromising on things that uh, seem valuable but they are no longer uh, relevant or have are easily uh, lost against competition. I see an interesting idea around the co-creation with platforms like Amazon. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's a, that's a good one. Oh, we have here also something around new costing model, which indeed would constitute a, a change, change in degree. I see people are also putting uh, on the, the adapt level. I like one particularly. <laughs> Buy Twitter now that it's cheaper. I think that's actually a very bold move that's it's coming later. I think just to, to adapt, it's not the, uh, the typical move to adapt to the changing conditions. So I think at this space, uh, we can still get away with some level of incremental innovation, even at the uh, change of kind, because it's just a matter of kind of bringing everything together and uh, lowering some barriers, because that's what every, uh, competition is uh, about right now, and that's what the market demands. The <laughs> buy twitter now it's cheap yes <laughs> it would definitely allow for a change of a business model um i uh, i really like also the idea of uh, add social uh social aspect to to that and i think when uh, diana was talking about the presence of mastercard in the gray ocean i think this is really a noble and important social ocean. cause no, no, the gray, the local market, uh, where MasterCard is actually uh, allowing the unbanking uh, population to have access to, to this uh, and uh, transform lives, really. Um, I think they had an ambition to connect 500 million unbanking people, if I'm not, if my memory serves me well. So uh, for sure, this, this is very strong on the social. And, and come with uh, adaptable models that work specifically for this market, not just apply the general approach um, that they have in the red ocean, so to say, but have a specific local offering that uh, allows, uh, allows people um, according to their needs and uh, capabilities and affordability to still uh, be connected and still benefit from that. Or they can become a main partner for Twitter Pay. Yes, why not? <laughs> That's an angle there. So the question, who knows here, <laughs> MasterCard CEO? <laughs> yes, I think, I guess it's not just a organizational problem, but it's a, it's a matter of uh, branding and how people first 
they are not. So I guess, you know, in this adaptive model, because market preference and, you know, customers uh, have tended to to be, develop a more preference for open companies that, you know, showcase their people and are proud of them. Yeah, I think this is uh, this can be a really powerful move to see such a big traditional navy becoming a bit more friendly here. I wish I knew more to see and uh, think about and position them in the uh, green ocean, but I uh, couldn't find in my research information what is going on there. So um, it would be interesting to see um, as we continue to to develop our framework and, and learn more to see how does this fit and um, also perhaps um, use it as a opportunity if uh, once you map your company or challenge and if you see that perhaps an ocean doesn't come naturally this is a certainly a research area for you to to keep an eye on um should we now do the flash yeah. voting yes uh, because so we would we like to, do to now... narrow down this uh, these ideas let's say for the survival and the adaptation and see what does the group think which is the strongest of those um to go against the <clears throat> the our monster, the Stila. So first we do survival, and then we will do adapt. Because I think we need to extract one of the most important yes. from each, and we'll take it later. So you'll see. Okay. Let's see. Maybe we can give it extra minute. We we have time not to put so much pressure. There's, there's no rush. Uh, I'll just shut it when uh, everyone is done. Everyone is uh, entitled to their uh, democratic right. The red pencil. That's what I have in Holland. That's how you. Make your vote. How? A red pencil for voting. When you go and fill in and provide your vote, you have to use a specific red pencil. Oh wow! Well. Not not a pen, not any other color, but red. We get a stamp, not a pen. Take one more vote and no. That's true. So people Ten are seconds. undecided. Ten seconds. Well, five. Do we have a winner? Okay, let's see. Preparing results. So, okay, co create with platforms like uh, Amazon and lock others out with better conditions. We also have a close one to create a digital bank wallet so users can do uh, all their banking in one spot. Okay, so maybe we can just take both since they're so close. Um, I'll just copy these for later. And, uh, and we'll come back. I know you guys can follow me moving around, so uh, bear with me. And now we do a second round of voting here, which is on the top. I'll leave two minutes. Okay, there we go. Set. And start.
Vamos, un staff. Yeah, we definitely need some music uh, and background. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, I can try to sing, but lounge it, will be, music. it will be uh, a nightmare for everyone. So, so I want, I want, I will preserve your. <laughs> well, I think we should uh, tell uh, uh, Nero that because uh, they have like in the timer they have music, but for voting they don't, which is uh, interesting because you'd have to like what run them at the same time. It would be weird. Let me see. Oh, okay. So you can also have a parallel timer. Okay, next time, I promise. Next voting session will have. You take a peek. Uh, I think there's nothing about uh, the ocean. Chill. Chill calm deal. slow. Yeah, look. Oh, calm, calm slow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> we'll go for that. Okay. So let's see the voting. Five seconds. Wow. Eight. Become a main partner. Eight for Peter Place. Nice. Okay, so okay, and then make it fun and look adaptable to uh, generation real needs. Yes. So I'm going to take those two as well. And as Diana is doing that, I think we can um, <clears throat> uh, we can move to the next activity. So now that we've overcame the um, survival and adaptation, we actually want to ask you to expand the horizon and really um, think about the change of space. Where could MasterCard go next in the pursuit of this growth? So this is the uh, first activity on the left side with the yellow color. So this is our expansion uh, space, but also if you feel that you would like to do the green as well. In the green, what we wanted to do is to take the um, uh, trajectory even further and think about this breakthrough innovation because we don't feel like stopping an expansion. We want to know what the transformation will look like and where can possibly MasterCow go next where no one has gone. Uh, hopefully not to Mars, but who knows, maybe there. <laughs> And uh, we will do this in a similar way. So we will give um, uh, everyone five minutes to think and uh, come up with some ideas in the, yes, moonshot. Why not? Um, uh, give some ideas for the change of space, which is the third degree of innovation, where you do the most uh, uh, <clears throat> radical one, but also think about the breakthrough. Can we imagine? And so think about how much you're helping is, uh, now, Mastercard. Yeah, <laughs> your, where our everyone contribution has access to, to, to finance and access to. Uh, access to, to credit and access to uh, basically a facility to make their dreams come true, regardless of the uh, conditions, regardless of the marketplace, the country of origin and their uh, socioeconomic background. So this would be a total revolution. And may as well be the green ocean. As we were saying at the beginning, we couldn't find a green ocean. So through this breakthrough innovation space, we are looking for a potential green ocean. Yeah, and we want to kind of put pressure because like, you know, many companies do have ESG uh, goals and uh, like they're kind of in compliance with the SDG goals, but like if you think about it, you are not serious unless you truly open up your business to to serve those goals directly. And I think doing something for the green ocean like that is truly uh, showing that you are uh, staying true to to your commitments. So that's another way to see and kind of even out a little the. Uh, the areas of impact a business can can make. I'm gonna zoom in a little. I want to see what people are doing. First, alien space currency. Yes. Wealth redistribution for collaborative networks. 
indeed, Mastercard can become an angel investment investor. Excuse me, in the emerging markets. Why not? They have the skills and they have the the analytics and uh, the power to do so. I really like this idea of the um, teaching space, basically raising mm. the financial education uh, of people um, to understand what it means to be economically independent. That's a, that's a very, very, very big one. Yeah, there's definitely a need for that. But what if people get so conscious and so well educated that they're not willing to spay, spend money mindlessly? Oh, this is a tricky one. What if so my the... did fight poverty, like uh, Patagonia is fighting climate change and protecting monuments? I mean, this would have a huge mm. impact. I mean, this would be massive. I see on the on the right side this universal basic income provider. If uh, Mastercard would do this before a government would do it, I think it would be a, a mind blowing, I don't know, case of a, a strange, strange dystopian future <laughs> foreshadowing that. Yeah, financial backs uh, stop for marginalized communities. I mean. Inclusion is big on the agenda of everyone, and uh, um, this potential that w is with these communities is really massive. So, <clears throat> but at the same time, uh, they are disadvantaged. So, what could Mastercard do to bring this breakthrough innovation in that space? I was, uh, to be honest, I thought that maybe we'll struggle with the green ocean, <laughs> and we may not get so many ideas. But uh, the community surprises me. So. Everyone is super uh, uh, energetic that late on Thursday before Easter weekend. So I uh, really appreciate your commitment and contribution here. I see a very sad face on a sticking out. I'm uh, I'm trying to interpret it, but I am not sure how. Wow. I mean, my hey, favorite student, here is this. All student depth in the world. There you go. Yes, I please. Think it may, I, may come close to your heart. Well, I mean, the one of the the reality here is that uh, this breakthrough innovation is actually they might not even think about it. Like this might not be even considered as a, a viable place to be because of overlooking certain complexities. So not knowing what to do about innovation is quite a, a normal feeling here. But I think, you know, would MasterCard ever dismantle capitalism, which is essentially the structure that it sits upon? Just to, well, we can uh, put uh, it to vote because we also wanted to do the same yes. exercise in this round. So vote for the uh, expansion, which is the yellowish space and the green one we need your vote to see which is the winning ideas so maybe we start with yellow yes let's do the expansion pack so i'm gonna let it go and uh yes i'll uh, i'll have to vote so i can get out and uh then i'll uh, i'll put some music on <laughs> There we go. I'll give you a minute of another calm flow. I don't know if people like this one. Just you feel free to tell me. So I'm open to feedback. Yes, thank you. I can see that, Krasi. <laughs> thank you for your support. Now that I uh, resolved my connectivity issues and I had to fight my own monster. Uh... 
I mean, we're, you know, at the end of this uh, workshop, we are actually, you know, we're wanting to to figure out uh, uh, other challenges. You know, maybe this uh, technology uh, connection issues can be uh, an actual monster in a in another challenge. So, two more people who need to vote. Sixteen. There we go. Let's see the results. Oh, everyone loves education. So into teaching space to support people first and understand with, with understanding how to deal with money. So see, this is a really big topic. So I'm going to take that and go to the other one. But I'm going to also need to come back to uh, works of experience. So now, one re last round of voting. I think this is the last time we'll ever get to, to, to vote. So be prepared. If you love this part of the, the activities, sorry to disappoint. There's no more. There we go. Okay, I'm changing cosmic vibe it is. It's a breakthrough and I saw alien currency. It has to be this one. This is positively ominous. So three more people left. Okay, one more citizen. Will we get that vote? Thumbs up. So let's see who's the winner. So supporting public infrastructure for from transaction fees. Okay, we're taking that one. It's actually the most realistic and feasible uh, breakthrough option. Move that to the summary page. And now we move to, oh yes, the summary. So this was our last activity here. Rossi or Kevin, do you want to explain a bit something that uh, we actually we haven't discussed or included because this is part of a it's in development right now. You know, we haven't really talked about customers much uh, and the landscape items, the fact that there is some shore around. So uh, yeah. we have a better version of it, but we could really appreciate some uh, feedback here on what would be your suggestions to improve this part. So maybe Rossi, you can explain a little bit. Indeed, because you may be wondering uh, what kind of a strategic framework is there if uh, we don't have customers and um, we have not forgotten that and we thought that for the purpose of the workshop today we would just use one um, which was MasterCard but indeed <clears throat> this framework, our <clears throat> excuse me, our thinking there was to uh, also use to, to the extent that we can um, the context of the oceans and think about can we have um, this different way of uh, 
separating customers, but not in the traditional se uh, sense of segmentation, but also to merge somehow the customer segment with the business model. And this is where we are heading with uh, our exploration and the extra work that we will be doing from now on, because of course we realize that um, there is a B2B, B2C, B2G context and also uh, quite a mix between uh, B2C to, uh, sorry, B2B to C and a chain of events. But what we want to uh, make in the next uh, release of the framework, uh, this integration between <clears throat> the customer segments and uh, the business models that um, they can be rich with. And so far in our exploration, we found four distinct business models that we are going to work on next. Of course, the first one, the easiest one is the direct one where you can uh, find these customers through direct sale, uh, single sales, um, and uh, uh, perhaps the easiest. But also uh, what is interesting to explore is the indirect route. When you work with resellers, so you have in an ecosystem uh, manner with different partners and your very chain plays a role of how you find customers. So the indirect route is also very important. Uh, since we were working a lot in the yellow ocean today, we thought that we should not forget the so-called quick route. And um, a, a metaphor for quick routes are these subscription models that allow uh, a lot of the blitz scaling to happen and also the, the fast way to gauge into the, uh, uh, to gauge different customers and uh, different segments. And last but not least was the, this idea of the temporary route when we have the on-demand models that uh, allow this flexibility um, and we think that it is very important, especially if we put into the context the uh, green and also the gray ocean, the locality that we spoke about, or if we're in the more sustainable uh, mind frame, but it's still work in progress, so bear with us. And also, if you are interested, at the end of the session, do uh, let us know or contact us if you want to take part in the next release when we take the framework further. And with that, I think we can uh, get towards the summary of uh, uh, yes. bringing together what happened in this uh, hour and a half that we are spending together with you. Yeah, so like we said, you know, for simplicity purposes, we you know chose MasterCard to kind of ground us a little. And we also stuck to one ocean. But normally, I think it would be our ambition would be to play in all the oceans and consider how dynamics, how these relationships here uh, are changing. We, we want to know what our enemies or friends or, you know, frenemies are, are up to, not just the, the choose to ignore. But we wanted to show that there can be a nonlinear leap rather than always having to connect on a very specific and traditional logic route of things so if we want to find out things i think uh, this would be you know kind of an exciting uh, approach to it so oh there we go double circle so this is our uh, our key elements that we managed to 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 highlight so we started with mastercard into the e-commerce we touched on the magician, the ones we cho chose to ignore via Twitter. We voted on the greed and the Sila. And here we have the, uh, the, the actions or the decisions that we could possibly consider in order to uh, navigate at each level of, uh, you know, fighting the monster, but also considering some, you know, uh, outside the box thinking because they're not strictly reduced to uh, you know just the the the, the attacking the, the the monster of greed but it's a, they are quite feasible options and legitimate uh, ideas to bring on but I don't think in a traditional setting it's easy to bring them and have a, a conversation unless there is a tool, a method, or a flow that can enable uh, this sort of conversation. So I see on the, like we, we voted on the survive, we chose these two options, which uh, was to, to create a digital bank wallet so user can do all their banking in one sp spot. So, you know, uh, very unified solutions that we're looking for. Then the co-creation was a really big thing. Uh, 
which is becoming increasingly important for big players to learn to cooperate, not just with big players, I think. Smaller ones are also worth considering. It's not just a big guy's league. Uh, on the adaptive uh, spot to, to kind of consider potential strategies to even, you know, take this unconventional partner and uh, just invest in Twitter pay and have a share in there. You know, if you can't beat them, join them, I guess. Uh, and of course, really considering the new generation's real needs. The the future is important. The future customers are also important. Um, and of course, on the, is that the transform or expand level, this teaching space, I think it was really, really interesting to consider, given that it's such a big global need, this financial literacy, and probably it would raise the, the standards for, for living. And lastly, we had this breakthrough innovation that we were considering the supporting public infrastructure from transaction fees. So not necessarily a pro bono project, but actually an ecosystemic innovation, an ecosystemic investment, I think. it's uh, And, you know, to be able to uh, kind of come back to this yellow ocean, we would have to use all of these insights, all of these ideas somehow to uh, succeed in the yellow ocean that we associated with e-commerce kind of being more into this uh, into this space so uh kevin do you want to say a few words here what do you think it stands out as we look at i'm, I'm going to zoom out a little so we have a really big framework here but i think we're able to see you know how we jumped around yeah yeah yes indeed the one of the um, the goal behind is uh, as you mentioned uh, non-linear thinking uh that this framework uh, allows you to uh to to do uh one thing i wanted to add on the monsters i think is uh was uh, worth m mentioning is the fact that uh you, you talked about the fact that we don't necessarily want to fight them Actually, the, the monsters themselves, they provide constraints. Uh, and this is where it's interesting, like depending on which monster and their characteristics, uh, they will provide different type of, of constraints that, that allows us to uh, think about the, the situation. And here in the, the list, there are clearly we see opportunities. So ways to direct the, um, the, the strategy or a set of strategies for uh, navigating the, the space. And that doesn't mean that people have to, like at least at the end, MasterCard has have to uh, follow any of these uh, as they are stated here, but just they are potential orientation that we see as um, uh, like cost effective in terms of energy to invest from where they stand right now. So it's the least um, uh, energetic uh, way to invest in the space uh, to new opportunities. So I, I would say that's uh, what I would like to to add on this uh, summary. And it, yeah, it was really interesting to see what kind of uh, uh, ideas and insights you you guys uh, wrote in uh, in this because like actually we didn't know <laughs> what kind of things you could do uh, on your side with that because we we have like our uh, ideas and how things combine together like um but but yeah that's interesting to see how you use it so thanks yeah and i mean there was no motivation on your side to work for mastercard right now uh but also uh, you know we had no uh expectation of whether you know anything is going to happen because you know sometimes we, we expect that the the quality of input is uh you know it's always required and uh the the, the framework was meant to prompt that and in, in a sense to mentally incentivize people to think differently and i think to a certain extent uh you know you, such a, a diverse bunch of people coming together uh and managing to still sit on the on the same page i think it's a uh, it's really really cool so thank you so i don't know what you think of opening the floor for questions um we, yes. we have like a, a question that uh was in the chat uh that uh, 
then you can leave. Yeah, so just me. one last so, thing before I stop yeah. sharing screen. It's this uh, feedback and follow up that we have a, mm -hmm. a couple of questions or do we do it on the other one? I don't recall. Uh, we can, uh, no, we can do it here. Yeah, so if, yeah, so if, if you, you guys have any input, yeah. Go ahead. just uh, don't hesitate <laughs> to write it here. We're really looking forward to the, the, the third one because we call this framework Ocean 20, but it means little. So <laughs> we're counting on you to give us a better name, please. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, yes, to yes, open the, we, the floor to questions. We had a question in the chat. I don't know if um, I, I presume it's pronounced Ba. Want to uh, unmute itself and um, themselves and uh, just ask the question, or I can read it. So just let me know. I guess you can read it. It's better this way. Yeah. If you could please. Then. Yes. Sure. No problem. So, uh, as a service designer, do you think it's useful to? Specialize, specialize in one of these ocean challenges or rather bridge or connect them all together? So I don't know. Does it make sense? Because I mean, uh, now that you, now that we got into this infographic idea, maybe it's a little more connected, like the, mm -hmm. the approaches, but um, I think was from the beginning, I was trying to get what you, uh, w when we were in the ocean part, uh, I was a little confused about what was the point of that mapping. Excuse me. Mm, no, I mean, uh, yeah, you're, uh, you're right. I mean, the, the way we kind of, uh, unpacked the the workshop was uh, not considering all the elements on equal side. We're hoping that when we do a real workshop, we are jumping into all the oceans and you know knowing what the oceans do uh, is essential. So that's the thing we didn't do. We just chose the the yellow ocean as a simplified version of navigating only one facet. But when we begin to jump in a in a different ocean, we get a new set of insights and things, and then we can actually input it on this summary page where things allegedly make sense, hopefully. Uh, because one thing that I am actually disappointed is that it's it's yeah uh, like Matt was actually saying on the in the chat. I don't really like voting. Sometimes there's a better way to choose the best ideas, uh, and it's it's difficult to do this with uh, so many people. It would have been really nice to have maybe breakout rooms or you know multiple discussions, but then it would have gotten really really complex and we would have lost people. Uh, so I think for more advanced sessions, this would be really exciting to just pick your favorite ocean and then you know. Do use it as a playground and do your thing there. Yeah, I think if I may uh, chip in um, as a service designer, what I would say that is missing that we didn't do today that perhaps um, uh, could shed a light of how to think of it is to to um, to think about the objectives of uh, also not just moving promotion to ocean, but targeting different customer segments and also different business models. And from that point on, I think that um, uh, I at least at this point, I don't think that there are specializations of, uh, to say, at this level for the oceans, but once you get deeper into the context and really put it, the framework to work, because what we did today is super high light version of it, then you may want to consider this specialization, because the uh, activities that happen and each ocean has these different characteristics which require different stance on the customer experience, different stance on certain uh, emotional benefits that needs to be elevated or not. And uh, this may give you a, a better uh, edge and a, a more depth if you begin to, to work with players in that domain. To learn more how to use these nuances and also how to, to bring uh, the full power by working dynamically with the monsters, making sure that um, uh, the player doesn't remain as is, but also is challenged, something that we didn't do today. So I would say specialization matters, but only in the full context of the framework. 
once we put all the components together. But I think it will be really cool if you become a specialist in the blitz scaling space. I think it's powerful. Or the green ocean. Yeah, but like so our, our, our strategic, yeah. So as strategic designers, I think uh, I'm trying to answer this uh, question I see here for for the as service designer. Do you think it's useful to specialize in one of these oceans challenges, or rather bridge connect them all together? So you know, building on what Krasi said, actually, uh, I think. You know, it's good to specialize, but uh, we as strategic designers and maybe some uh, kind of more general service designers, it's it's a really good skill to have if you want to connect or bridge the, the oceans together, especially if you're working with big organizations who already have this uh, presence in multiple oceans. You want to be able to have all of the, this holistic picture of what's going on because you end up kind of losing parts of their context. You're distorting that reality. We were so afraid at the beginning that these these different limiting frameworks do. So I think, you know, it's good to try both. If you can specialize, I mean, I don't think I would like to specialize. I like to be in between the, so I'm curious about the others. See one hand raised, Fede? So first of all, thank you for sharing. Um, as a strategic and service designer, for me, this was kind of mind blowing in terms of opportunity for mapping and kind of exploring the customer ecosystem. Uh, in a sort of playful way, I, I kind of see it as a sort of role playing game or board game where to have, let's say the ocean really works as a map to bring all around the table and bringing something from uh, role playing, um, like create the, I don't know, the paper of the enemies, let's say really imagine your comp a company that is your like your monster or your player. So you can really give a face and a name to those monsters. Um, I think something that maybe in in my opinion uh, didn't really um, I, I lost a little bit during this exercise, uh, probably because the time was sh short and we have a very fast rhythm. Was then when we were at the ideation phase. Uh, I think I wasn't really focusing on the monster type but just brainstorming ideas, let's say in a normal way. So uh, I was thinking that maybe mapping and giving names to like the specific monsters and stuff really helps to, um, to play it uh, very effectively. But in general, I'm, it's something I would, I, I would like to try in my next workshop to, to play out loud uh, with people using this metaphor of, of the ocean, the players and the enemies and then the mon monsters. Very good. One of our ambitions is to create some card games, you know, like that would be really fun. Yeah, I, I can really, I can really see, let's say, asking people to fill out cards and writing stuff and share and and explore in a playful way. Uh, if I think it's a really good way to, dream, uh, to drive people, maybe the first time in a workshop or like people with different uh, uh, seniority in the company, let's say bringing managers, executives and normal workers in the sa on the same table in a playful way. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much. I see another we hand, another, uh, Gustav. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, firstly, uh, thanks for doing this. It was uh, very insightful. Um, I'm not a service designer per se, uh, uh, and I got to learn a lot of stuff here. Uh, the question that I have is on, on uh, slide number 19 on the uh, service uh, segment. Uh, sorry, on the, uh, on the summary segment, right? And you have this uh, slide. Probably you have already explained this. I, I couldn't understand, but I was just trying to. Un so what I got sort of understood from this is we are trying to understand uh, uh, what kind of business they are doing. I also understand what are the routes. Uh, when it comes to landscape, what, do you, what did you uh, 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 really, uh, what we are really trying to identify when we, when we call this as a landscape uh, in this uh, uh, particular uh, slide? Are we, are we trying to understand uh, 
where the uh, the com uh, the organization or the company is playing uh, what does that mean so if i so, may uh, try to answer that but i don't know crazy um yeah maybe i can begin and then you chip in yeah. so our idea of a yes. landscape was really a departure point from the typical uh, customer segmentation that exists today of how we uh, how we approach it and we wanted to create something more dynamic so we thought that if we somehow merge the customer segment with the route to this landscape in it um, it creates this complexity and gives us the freedom to truly immerse ourselves to understand what does it take not only to go for a certain customer segment but never to forget the business model that it is required to enable this opportunity and get into this value space so always make sure that uh, we know how we are going to approach it and what value we bring back to the business. So that's why we wanted to call it a landscape to capture the dynamic aspect. And and, and from um, uh, the metaphorical aspect of it, you, you can really think of, you have this ocean, right? We, we define it uh, prior to, to that. And then within this ocean, you have like these um, items, these resources can be an island with a poor city on islands with no one on the island. Uh, and depending on, these uh, different features, it will define the likeliness of interactions between those elements and the players within the ocean, right? So uh, if you place it visually in um, the mapping exercise, uh, it helps you think about the relationship between the, um, the landscape itself, the, its resources, the players, and the business model and the customers, basically. That's the idea. But we, we didn't really dive in the, the subject in this exercise, so that's probably why it's uh, um, it's not really that clear. Cool. An interesting uh, suggestions uh, I see uh, in the in the chat was the the time as a variable or characteristic of each ocean. So I was actually thinking about this a lot because, for example, you know, thinking about the yellow ocean specifically, this one it's the the move fast. It's time here is kind of running very fast. Uh, but I, then when I started thinking about the other oceans, they are also having a component of urgency. After all, you know, underneath, you know, it's it's a fluid ocean. It's it's water, so everything moves. But I wouldn't, I, I don't know exactly. Maybe, you know, depending on the kind of business that we're looking at when it's it's a specific challenge, it would be interesting to to give certain time frames of how much time you want to spend in in a specific ocean and kind of plan your strategies uh, accordingly. I think this would be really interesting to think of the time component in the ocean, how much <laughs> until you soak or drown. Yeah, the, the, the something that we. Sorry, uh, just. The word is gone. Yeah, I'm. I'm just uh, going quickly. Just something that we thought about in, you know, um, playing with the framework is allowing people to have like a, a blank card for each item and being able to create their their own or adding characteristics that we didn't plan for at the beginning. So it, it will like in a very uh, playful way uh, change a bit the rules and how things interconnect. And so you can basically you can customize the the framework to your own needs or something that you feel like will better fit the situation that you are trying to to map so this is something you don't see here but this is something that we, we would like to try as well yeah uh, kevin we already have a suggestion for a sleeping monster <laughs> it came on the board so uh yeah yes. I, I saw it <laughs> that's cool <laughs> wonderful hey, thank you so much uh, I'm going to slowly bring us to the conclusion as it's tradition. We are very timely and yes. we will continue with that. But I will just let you know one thing before I go in the conclusion, which is uh, we have a tradition which is to finish on time, but to stay open for the crazy fews who are still curious and want to continue to come to have a bit of a conversation. We allow that, but just to respect the time uh, of those who want to have all the information, we will finish uh, on time. But before I do that, just two things that I want to share. At first is a big, 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 big thank you to Diana, Kevin, and uh, Krasi, and to all of you for joining. I think you should 
show, uh, send them so, some heart messages uh, in the chat. Uh, uh, tell them what they what, what you loved. Uh, I think they really deserve uh, a lot of love and a lot of gratitude from us for preparing this session, for sharing all this knowledge. I think we all got a lot from it. Um, three things that I got from it. I just going to share this as a service design. I think the oceans really are awesome to reveal, you know, that there are other possibilities that you never thought about that you can combine. I think we saw that and it's really awesome. Uh, with the players, it helps us to see that services can be as complex as humans, you know, having different roles and different moments. I think this is also something that is deeply inspiring. And the monsters also help us to see why are, do we find competitors interesting? You know, are we seduced? Do we fear them? I think these are deep questions that really help us. And again, I think uh, you did an awesome work and I'm extremely thankful for it. I share now a last little nugget for you, which is in the chat. You have a link there where you can uh, go and get notified for the next events. And if you are crazy enough, you can also say, oh, I'd love to volunteer, maybe uh, be part, uh, be a speaker for our next event. You know, you can uh, add information there also. I think this is something that we, uh, I think here we have something lovely. Uh, I'm quite excited to see the next version and whenever we receive the next version from Kevin, Prazi and Diana, we will also share it there, uh, obviously. And they have a lot of other stuff going on and we will obviously also share that. But again, a big, big thank you to everyone. A big thank you to Kevin, to Diana, to Krasi. Uh, I wish you all a lovely uh, holiday time, at least uh, uh, for the Christian culture uh, and for all the others, a lovely Friday and a weekend ahead. Thank you so much for joining, and we finish with one minute before, which is very Thank you. Swiss. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I you're allowed to say a little bit. Yeah, our contact details on the board, so feel free to connect. Thanks, everyone. Take Thank care. you very much. Have a lovely evening. Thank Bye. You. <laughs>